Greetings and assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth. Today I want to talk about the killing of the firstborn. Now you're never ever going to hear anything like this. In the types and shadows of the killing of the firstborn. Now I want to talk about, before we get there, the five times the United States officially apologized. These are a few instances where the U.S. admitted it had done wrong. These are the five times. Shielding a Nazi officer wanted for war crimes. The internment of Japanese citizens during World War II. The overthrow of the Kingdom of Hawaii. The Tuskegee Experiment. And lastly, an apology for slavery and the Jim Crow laws. Okay, these are so-called apologies. But I'm here to tell you, there is coming an apology from all of those that are involved in Christianity. Christianity owes us all a huge apology. Many pastors worldwide, some are dead and they can't even apologize. OK, but I am believing for an apology because let me tell you something. Christianity has been the biggest religious scam. Now, don't shoot me down because I'm preaching real good. I'm going to further prove my point. When we talk about the killing of the firstborn. Now, first of all, let's deal with this plague. The Christian church has failed to interpret the Bible. Now, the last plague that God gave Pharaoh was the killing of the firstborn. So according to the types and shadows, the last plague is Jesus death. Now, in Christianity... That's not true, because in Christianity, Jesus had already died, supposedly. OK, so it doesn't even make sense when we look at the last plague. The Quran is correct because the Quran says and it reads and this is going to be in Al Amram chapter three, Ayat 56. And when Allah said, O oh Jesus, I will cause thee to die a natural death and will exalt thee to myself and will clear from thee charges of those who disbelieve and will place those who follow you, that is the Muslims, above those who disbelieve, those are the Christians, until the day of resurrection. Then to me shall be your return. Now look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He says, and I will judge between you concerning that wherein you differ. So even Jesus has a judgment day. Even Jesus has differences that him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will settle. Now in Christianity, we paint the narrative that Jesus was perfect. And that he was sinless. That's not in the Quran. Just because the Quran says Jesus was holy and pure. It doesn't mean that him and Allah don't have differences that they have to settle. Now let's go to this plague. This is going to be in the book of Exodus chapter 11 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Now let's meditate on that. Now Pharaoh is a picture of Paul and Egypt is a picture of the Christians. So let's look at it like this. God is going to send a plague Upon Pharaoh and upon his church, Christianity has the kingdom right now. But after this plague, 
Christianity is going to let go all of his prisoners. All of its prisoners will be loosed, okay? Because Christianity has everyone, okay, in prison, okay? Christianity is responsible for the prison planet we live in today. So the church is going to let the people go after the last plague. Now, the last plague is the killing of the firstborn that Paul created. Paul created this religion of Jesus Christ being the firstborn among many brethren. He teaches us that God created the whole world through Jesus Christ. All of that teaching, that doctrine is going to be smashed when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closes Jesus' eyes. Now, the church, man, we are light years ahead of them in the house of David. They fail to realize what the killing of the firstborn really represents. It's a picture of God Almighty closing the prophet Isa's eyes at the last day. This is the last plague, not the first plague, okay? When you read about Pharaoh, God did many plagues, but the last plague was the killer plague because God Almighty killed Pharaoh's son who was considered God. And after he killed the firstborn of Pharaoh and everything he owned, that gained God all of the glory. God is most famous, according to the Bible, out of everything he ever done is freeing the children of Israel when he killed Pharaoh's son. And that is a picture of what God is going to do in the last day. The most famous event recorded in history is the killing of the prophet Isa. Okay? God Almighty is going to close the prophet's eyes. Now we have to go to the types and shadows. We'll come back to this. Let's go to 2 Samuel 11. Now, amazing. Now, this is amazing. In chapter 11 of 2 Samuel, we have David's sin. And it's the same thing in Kings, okay? Chapter 11, we have Solomon's sin with women, okay? Solomon and David, man, they had this issue with women. And the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, whom David is a type and shadow of, and Solomon is a type and shadow of, he has a reproach with a woman, okay? Some people love attacking the prophet Muhammad, but these people fail to realize that God Almighty, okay, that's what you call him. Hopefully you do, okay? He's not Jesus. We call him Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one whom loves this man so much. Now, there's a story, and this is just some dessert, about a man by the name of David. And he took another man's wife because this man actually was dead. Okay? This is Nabal. Okay? His name means fool. So David took his wife. In other words, that's a picture of the nation of Islam snatching up the church. At the last day, this woman was by the name of Abigail. Okay, now think about it. Was David justified in marrying Abigail? Many of you will say yes because her husband died. You will say yes. Well, I'm here to tell you the prophet Muhammad is justified in marrying a baby gal. Okay, it's just so many types and shadows of the prophet Muhammad through all these Bible characters, okay? If David was justified in marrying Abigail, the prophet Muhammad was justified in marrying a baby gal. There is no laws concerning ages or marriage, okay? Pedophile is a white man's word, okay? It's a white man's term, definition, and everything. It's not Bible, it's not in the scriptures. Okay, I just thought that was so cool. Now I want to get back to 2 Samuel chapter 11. It reads in verse 1, And it came to pass 
after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass at an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and he walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him. And he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house, and the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Now, this story is twofold. We can look at it in a positive light, and we can look at it in a negative light. First of all, let's deal with the negative, okay? Now, David is a picture of Paul in this story. Think about it. Paul is from the tribe of Judah because he's from the tribe of Benjamin. All of the tribes of Israel were split into two kingdoms, the north and the south. And Judah was the southern kingdom, which included Levi and your boy Benjamin. Okay, so this is a picture of Paul killing the prophet Esau on biblical record and then taking his church. Okay, that's exactly what this story is going into. Now, the baby that he created, okay, or the son he created out of this religion is the prophet Esau, okay? And that baby, David's child, was sickly. It was sick. That baby had to die because of what David did. And that baby, my brothers, my sisters, is a picture of the prophet Esau. He was born into death, okay? All because of what Paul did, okay? Think about Pharaoh's son. Pharaoh's son didn't do nothing. It was all because of what Pharaoh did that his son had to die. And it's all because of what Paul did that Jesus has to die. So that baby was born sick and that baby is the prophet Esau who will die at the last day. This is a picture of the killing of the firstborn. This is the last plague. This is the plague where the church is going to be destroyed. The church is going to let go of all of its prisoners. Okay? Right now, the Christian church refuses to let you go. The church is being abused right now through the teachings of the apostate Paul, through the sword of Ammon, and we'll get that in a minute. Okay? You'll learn about what the sword of Ammon is. And David, okay, let's go to the story. David took another man's wife, okay? He had an affair with her. Then he got her pregnant. And then he killed her husband. And then a baby was born out of that relationship and that baby had to die, okay? He took Uriah, speaking of Joab, by the instructions of David and put him up where the fighting was real fierce, where you know you about to get knocked off, okay? And then they pulled back from him. And that's exactly what Paul did with the prophet Esau. He made it so that Jesus is Lord, okay? And then he pulled back from the prophet Esau when he says in Romans 1, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all those who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And then he goes on to say, for they have changed the glory of God into corruptible man when he was the one who taught us that Jesus Christ is the firstborn of every creature, that he is the one 
whom God used to create the world. Paul taught us that. So Paul was the one who took Uriah or the prophet Isa because Uriah is a picture of the prophet Isa. He put him on the front line of the battle and then he pulled back from him. That's exactly what Paul did to Jesus. Jesus was the lamb, okay, born to die. All because of what Paul did from the foundations of the world. But this is the thing. He's not going to be killed by man. No, no, no. Allah took him. Why? Because Allah personally is going to deal with Paul's son. Okay? Allah has no sons. That's where you slipping at, my brother. My Muslim brothers, you need to realize that Allah has no sons. So how are you going to debate the Bible with Christians when you believe that Jesus is calling God Almighty his father? Jesus spoke in parables. So when he was saying father, 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 he was speaking of Paul. Okay, Paul was the father of the Christian church and Jesus was the son of the Christian church. Going back to this story because we still got to deal with the positive light. So we see that Paul took another man's wife, made a baby by her, and that baby has to die. Okay, that's why David, he said, you know what? I prayed for the child. I fasted. And all of his people was looking at him crazy when he started eating after the baby died. Okay, this is going to be a sweet death because God is going to get his glory back that the Christians have stole from the father. All those accolades they put on Jesus, all of the glory they put on Jesus, all of that glory is about to be snatched away and is going to go back to its rightful owner, and that is God Almighty, okay? So now let's deal with the positive light. David was on his rooftop. That's a picture of the prophet Isa in heaven, in the king's house. Why? Because God is king. And he's looking down from the banister of heaven. And he sees a beautiful religion. Okay? This woman is named Bathsheba. Get it? Bath. She's taking a bath. She's performing voodoo, ablution, ritual washings. She's purifying. Okay? And David came and he snatched that woman up. And that's how Jesus is the Messiah in Islam and Islam only. This is seen through the types and shadows in your Bible. Okay? If you would just open up your eyes and receive the eye saw that Jesus was trying to give you. So we see that God's word is like a mountain. You can climb it from the south view and get a view. You can climb it from the north view and get a different view. You can climb it from the east and the west and you can get all different views. But it's the same mountain. The Bible says his scriptures are double in the book of Job 11 and 6. Okay? There's multiple meanings. Okay? But God love of none except those that dwell with wisdom. And he will show you things that your teacher, that your pastor cannot even tell you. So with that being said, let's go back to the firstborn. Okay? Let's go to Exodus 11 and 1 again. And the Lord said unto Moses, yet will I bring one plague more upon Paul's church. I'm paraphrasing. And upon Egypt, Egyptian, get it, Christian, Egyptian, Christian. God's going to bring a final plague upon the church. And he's going to kill your idol. Okay. He's going to bring down that which you exalted. As God. Okay. This is all a part of the plan. The church. The church man. I'm telling you. They so slow man. It's not even funny. They don't even get this. We see that Joseph. Was an Israelite. But he ended up a what? An Egyptian. Okay. And when he died. What did he tell the children of Israel? He said carry my Bones, okay, because that's a picture of the prophet Isa at.
at the last day, God Almighty is going to cause him to die a natural death. You see, Jesus had a supernatural birth, okay? In other words, everybody thought he was supernatural. Everybody thought he was God, okay? The scriptures say he shall be called the son of the highest. Many people think Jesus is God today, but he's going to have a natural death. Why? Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes him to die, everybody's going to know that Jesus is no God, that he's a human being. And God's going to get all of his renown, all of his glory. This is why he saved Rahab. Rahab told the children of Israel, she said, look, our hearts melt because of you and your God. Rahab could feel in her spirit the killing of the firstborn at the last day. She said all the inhabitants of Jericho, our hearts melt. We heard about what your God did. Okay. And God is going to get all the glory back one day. The final plague is when he causes Jesus to die. Exodus 11 and 1 again. And the Lord said unto Moses, yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh. Let's deal with the fur. Paul is the man with the fur. See, Pharaoh fur. Okay, hollow fur, nez, fur, pot of fur. All these characters I'm bringing up is a type and shadow of Paul. Let's keep going. Then we have the Pharisee. See? Fur. This is the man, watch this, that claimed to be the father. Fur. He claimed to be the father. He wanted to do what God Almighty is going to do to Jesus at the last day. Y'all have no clue of how much idolatry you are involved in in Christianity. Paul wanted to be God Almighty. Paul wanted to have the honor of killing the prophet Esau. But God said, I will not share my glory with another. Okay? It's God Almighty who has the honor and privilege of closing the prophet Esau's eyes. Now, that's perfectly right. Think about it. If you've been listening to everybody say Jesus God, Jesus is God, Jesus is God, Jesus is God, and you're God, okay, then you have to put on a demonstration. You have to show the world who is God. And God's going to get glory out of the death of the prophet Esau. So one more plague, and Pharaoh is going to let you go. Verse 4, and Moses said, thus saith the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. Verse 5, and all the firstborn, ain't Jesus called the firstborn? Yeah. Okay. All the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne. Okay. Even unto the firstborn of the maid servant. Now the one who is sitting on his throne and the one who is the maid servant, the servant and the king is Yeshua. Okay. God Almighty is telling you through the type and shadow that he is going to kill the prophet Isa at the last day. How come Nathaniel ain't talking about that? How come your camp leaders ain't talking about this? How come your pastor ain't talking about this? You know why? Because y'all all... all Owe the people an apology. You false teachers, okay? You haven't studied the scriptures enough to even know what you're talking about, okay? The killing of the firstborn is a picture of Christ dying at the last day, okay? And that's why when you read the gospels, the gospels are parables. And the last thing that happens in the gospels is the so-called death of of the prophet Isa. They didn't even recognize him after he was supposedly crucified. All that stuff was parables, dark sentences. Only wise people can get it. You can't get it because you're taking these parables literally. Okay? So the last and final plague is the killing of the firstborn. Verse 6, and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of of Egypt such as there was none like it nor shall be like it 
any more. Now, fast forward. Let's go to Revelation chapter one and let's go to verse seven. Because if the church has the victory and Jesus has triumphed and all that garbage they talk about, why is there going to be crying in chapter one? Okay, because the killing of the firstborn did not happen yet, Paul. Paul was like rushy. He was rushing. The killing of the firstborn has not happened yet. So now let's go to Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. Now, pierced is going into a heartbreak. Even Paul tells you that in Timothy. He talks about being pierced with many sorrows. Okay, this is going into a heartbreak. Think about Samson when he had his eyes gouged out. Okay, this is a picture of the prophet Isa sitting up there watching all of y'all say he's God, watching all of y'all associate him with God. The church has been Delilah who has literally put the prophet Isa's eyes out. Okay, think about it. This piercing is not talking about the soldier who stuck up a spear and poked him. No, this is going into the heartbreak going on. And they also which pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Now, according to the prophets, God is going to make it a morning like an only son. Now, this is in your scriptures. Okay, let's get that. Let's go to the book of Amos. Amos 8 and 10. And I will turn your feast into mourning. And all your songs into lamentation that's going into the prophethood of the Beni Israel. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only son and the end thereof as a bitter day. So God is prophesying through the prophets in dark sentences of the killing of the firstborn. Now the church, y'all need to catch up. Israelite camps, y'all need to catch up. Your problem is, y'all don't know who Paul is. Y'all don't understand that Paul is the wolf in sheep clothing. He's the man with the fur who wanted to steal the honor and privilege of killing the prophet Isa. That only belongs to God Almighty, okay? This is the reason why in the book of Numbers 23 and 19, it says, God is not a man, nor is he the son of man, that he should repent. He's trying to tell you right then, there's coming a day when I'm going to show you that Jesus is not God. The Christians have no excuse. The Bible says God is not a man, Numbers 23, 19. The Bible says Jesus is a man, Acts 2, 22. So there's no excuse. There's none. Okay, and then Jesus told you everything he said was in parables. So let's continue to deal with this firstborn. Exodus 12 and 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. That's talking about the Christian church. And I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. Now, who is the God of Egypt? Now, Egypt is going into the Christian nation. Who is the God of the Christians? Jesus is, okay? According to the Christians, Jesus is, okay? But really, Paul is the father of Jesus, okay? So that's why he said, I'm going to destroy the gods of Egypt. He already beheaded Paul. Paul's already in hell. The Hadiths in the al Bakari, it already gives us a prison by the name of Paul, okay? And that is Bulas in the Arabic tongue. So we know that Paul is in hell. He is the rich man in the parable in Luke 16, okay, where it talks about the man who wanted somebody to come back from the dead and go and tell his brothers. And then it talks about the poor man, which is the prophet Isa. So we know his fate already, okay? But the other son. Okay, the prophet Isa has to die. He's in paradise. He's in Abraham's bosom, just like Lazarus. So God is going to destroy the gods of Egypt. He already got Paul, but there's one more. Okay, the last one 
is the prophet Esau. Verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt. Now, verse 12 gives us a clue as into why God is going to do this. Let's get that. Exodus 12 and 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. That's why. Because Christianity, courtesy of Paul, stole his glory. And God is going to get all the glory back. Let's go to verse 15. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Now that's going into the Quran. Because the Quran don't talk about Jesus rising from the dead. Okay. We don't teach that Jesus was crucified and he rose from the dead. No. We teach about us all being resurrected. Okay. We talk about the resurrection of all mankind. Okay. The Quran is the unleavened bread. Okay. The New Testament is the leavened bread. Why? That's the bread with the yeast. That has the teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. This is why Jesus told his disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And we know that Paul was not only a Pharisee, but he was the son of a Pharisee. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eat of leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Wow. Seven days. Shall there be no leaven found in your houses? Now, that's going into the teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He's not talking about no breadcrumbs. OK, he's talking about that doctrine. He's talking about that Christianity. OK, he said, looky here. I don't want that stuff in your house. OK, you're going to be cut off going on. Seven days represents a number of completion. And the seven days is going into the final day, okay, when Allah will cause Jesus to die. Okay, so let's get that scripture on the baby that was sick, okay? That baby that David made had to die. Now, this is going to be 2 Samuel 12 and 15. And Nathan departed unto his house. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David. And it was very sick. Now, that's the prophet Esau. Peace be upon him. Oh, he has to die publicly. Oh, because of what Paul did. Oh, beware of every brother. Because every brother will utterly supplant. You need to stop trusting people, okay? You need to watch out for man. Okay, because man got the prophet Isa in this predicament. So sad. Okay, he was the lamb slain from the foundations of the world. Now, this is why there's going to be weeping. Oh, okay, there's going to be weeping. David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And that's what the Christians are doing. OK, they trying their best to make God accept this stuff. But no, this baby has to die. I don't care how many sermons you preach. I don't care how many messages you give, Mr. Gino Jennings. OK, it's not going to stop the last day plague. The prophet Isa has to die. He has to die. OK, going on. David, therefore, besought God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth. But he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day. Oh, my God. That's going into the last day. This is going into the day that God Almighty causes the prophet Isa to die. Now, all of this truth I'm bringing out, yes, it's in our Bible. But 
What makes all of this stuff true is the Quran. The prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He is the one who gave us this revelation. Okay? He told us boldly. The prophet Isa did not die. And then he tells us boldly that God is going to cause him to die. Now, the Quran is the completion of the Old Testament scriptures, of the previous scriptures. It makes it complete. Now we understand what the firstborn, okay, of Egypt was really going into. It's going into the religion that Pharaoh or your boy Paul created. And that son that he made God. That religion has to die. And the one whom they made king, okay, of that religion has to be the public example. When God causes the prophet Isa to die, woo, everybody's going to know that God has no partner, okay? Can't nothing stop this from happening, okay? And I'm not a prophet or anything. This is just what's in the scriptures, okay? This is what's in the Quran, okay? And in our Holy Bible. But you don't have no respect for the Bible. All this truth is in the Bible. Even some of our Muslim brothers don't have that much respect for the Bible because of the false teaching in Christianity, okay? So I'm so grateful unto God for showing me this, okay? I didn't watch nobody's videos, okay? I didn't read nobody's article. All this came from just studying the Bible. Now, let's keep going. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died, and the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voices. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? Verse 19. But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said unto his servants, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed, okay? He performed evolution in your Bible and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Why? Because it's going to be a happy day. Oh, it's going to be a sweet victory for the nation of Islam when God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, causes Jesus to die. And right now, David is worshiping the Lord, even though his baby died. Why? Because your church is blind. Your pastors are blind. Your camp leaders are blind. This is a picture of the real prophet Isa. Okay. And now his servants and all of them, they trip and let's keep going. They set bread before him and he did eat. Then said his servants unto him. What thing is this that thou hast done, that thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive? But when the child was dead, thou did arise and eat bread. Now watch how he brings out what we say in the Quran. And he said, while the child was alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Why should I keep fasting? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. So even the patriarch David was trying to tell you, can't nobody rise from the dead? Okay. Allah says to me shall be your return. He tells us all. We all have to return to him. And David is bringing that revelation out in your Bible. So there's nothing new under the sun. History repeats itself. History repeats itself over and over and over and over and over again. I can keep going. There's many stories. I have many other notes, but I've already made my point right here in your own Bible. Through the types and shadows, we have the death 
of the prophet Isa as the last plague. Not the first plague, Paul. No. Paul, you're not God. Paul wanted to be the father. Paul wanted the honor of killing the prophet Isa. But no, it doesn't belong to Paul. It belongs to God Almighty. So there you have it. The Christian church, particularly, particularly the nation of Edom owes us all a huge apology. Okay? They've been pissing in your face and you believed it to be rain. Now let's see who stepped up to the plate. There's not one person in the Bible, okay, who can match what I'm talking about. There's nobody out there that can refute what I'm bringing out because everything I'm bringing out, for the most part, is supported by the Quran, by the revelation God Almighty gave the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. So let's see who stepped up to the plate, okay? Let's see what pastor apologize let's see what camp leader apologize for working with the man with the fur the apostate paul the wolf and sheep clothing that has hoodwinked the church assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth